So just starting under the hood, this is a walkthrough of the NDI system CNG diesel hybrid setup. Um, just to make it a little bit easier to install your kit once you have it. Starting here with the regulator, I've mounted it with the bracket with self-tapping screws right to the firewall. Um, on a Chevy or Ford, it'll be on the driver's side. On a Dodge, it's easiest to actually put it on the other side, on the passenger side, just above the turbo and intake. Um, once you have that mounted, first thing I usually do is run my coolant lines. So you tee into your coolant where it goes into your heater core and out. On a Chevy and Dodge, it's right there, easy to get to. On a Ford, sometimes you have to dig a little bit to get to them, but those just go right to the back of the regulator there. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then with your CNG line to your regulator, just make sure to coil it at the end there. Once you have it fed back from the up from the bed, make sure to coil it where it goes into that intake. It'll make it a ton easier to to get it in there. You'll have a little bit of room to play with. Um, I'm running a sensor on my edge monitor for my CNG pressure, so it just plugs in. But if you're running the regular dial gauge, the plug is easy to wire into the, the harness. You just match the colors. You, you ground the ground and then match the other two colors, and that's it, and then plug it in. Um, the in intake fitting, the brass fitting, what you'll want to do is take off the plastic piece of your air intake, completely take that off so you don't have to worry about getting shavings in the intake. Drill a pilot hole, and then I like to use a stepper bit like this to drill the hole out until it's just a little bit smaller than that brass fitting. That way you can self-tap the brass fitting into the plastic and it'll be secure and, and clean and just make sure you get any plastic shavings out of that tube before you put it on. And then just run your hose to the regulator, right to the bottom of the regulator. And for starters, have that ball valve closed about halfway and then fine tune it from there. With the with the regulator, there's two screws. The one on the front there, they're preset from the factory. Try and leave that one. Don't mess with it. The one on the back, you can see there, just under the coolant hoses. That one you can fine tune. Try and leave it. Um, email me if you're still trying to get it tuned right and you want to adjust that. And I'll let you know how to do that, but try and just leave those and not, not mess with them if possible. Just use the, the ball valve to give it more CNG or less to adjust the flow. Um, and then going to the cab. The box I mount just at the lower part of the dash there where it's out of the way. Um wherever it looks like it's going to be convenient for you. It's just two small screws to mount the mounting plate and then it slides on. And then there's the wiring harness coming off the back for the pressure gauge and then there's a black wire off the on-off switch. That's the ground obviously. And then two red wires. One of them is your power source into the switch and the other is the power source out. So the power source out just plugs right to the bottom of the, the regulator and the power source in comes from either the fuse box or if you're running a boost switch it'll go to the boost switch first. Um, if, you're, if you have a Dodge you're probably running a boost switch. I have a separate video to show you how to hook up that boost switch but on a Chevy or Ford it'll just be that power switch from the fuse box either replace the ignition fuse and use that for your power source or t some trucks will have an auxiliary or uh, just an empty fuse slot that says, says auxiliary you can plug that fuse into there for your source 
Um, going to the, the back of the truck, to the tank here, the mounting bracket is just self-tapping screws to get your fill valve mounted just next to the bed rail in the front corner of the bed, just next to your tank. And you'll have a line coming off the back of the fill valve and also one connecting to the bottom. Make sure to coil the line before it goes into any fitting. So between the tank and the fill valve and where it goes into the bottom of the fill valve up to the regulator. So the back of the fill valve, coil that around and feed into your tank. And the bottom, coil it and feed it down, drill a hole through the bed. A uh, three quarter inch ho hole through the bed. And it's usually a good idea to put a piece of hose around that line where it goes through the bed just so it's not rubbing against that raw metal there. And then uh, underneath the truck where the line runs, usually best to keep it about between the frame and, and bed. And in your kit you'll have a few of these little grommet fasteners. Just put those around the line and self-tap these into your, the body underneath to keep that line from rubbing around on metal. To cut your line where you need to cut for length, just use a standard small sized pipe cutter like this. It works fine. And the compound you want to put on your fittings, this is what I use, it's just joint compound. Make sure you get the stuff that's made for high pressure. It'll say on there um, that it's for high pressure fittings. I just, you can get this at Home Depot. Um, or we can send you some with the kit if you, if you pay for it. It's just a couple bucks for a small tube. Um, so that's, that's pretty much how everything goes together. I'll email you photos of how the fittings, the compression fittings go together. Um, the compression fittings that go into the fill valve and the regulator work the same. The compression fitting that goes into the tank is different. So I'll send you pictures on how those compression fittings work. And when you put them together, just don't crank them down super hard. Just kind of get them snug. And then check them with soapy water. And if they're seeping a little bit, then you can snug them down more. Just don't over tighten them. Uh, to begin with and if you have specific questions email me uh, naturaldieselpower at gmail.com or give me a call whichever um, and that's that's pretty much how everything works obviously your tank just get that mounted down securely make sure you have solid bolts with with lock washers to get your tank mounted